everyone, Taylorson here and welcome to stage 16, episode 16 of this Tour de France 2020. It's been ages since I last uploaded a video of this, so if you want to catch up on the series, just watch the last episode and see where we are on the series. This one could be a big day for the breakaway because of the flat section before the final climb. I think the breakaway will go all the way today, so... We will probably be sticking Kalmajan or Tarame into the break. There are five climbs today, two Category 3s, one Category 2 and two Category 1s. Interestingly, the second Category 1 has bonus seconds on top of it. However, I don't think the favourites will be there to take those bonus seconds. Let's see what the team director has to say about this stage and then we'll jump in. It'll be a very demanding day for everyone. Several mountain passes and a summit finish await you. This is a key stage for the general classification. It's also important in the struggle for the mountain standings. We can't expect to be on top at the end of the stage, but we must absolutely pick up points to make up our deficit. We don't have what it takes to play a prominent role. If we want to make a showing, we'll have to join the early breakaway. Good luck, guys! Right, here we go then, and it's absolutely perfect in the briefing of what we want to do. We want either Tarame or Kalmajan to go in a breakaway. I don't want both of them to go in the break, otherwise we'll have to do the majority of the pacing. So I think I'm just going to put Kalmajan in the break because I feel like there's a chance of it going all the way and he can climb up the yellow jersey standings and the mountain standings. So, yeah, let's get into the race. Hello cycling fans everywhere. Today's profile creates an interesting strategic dilemma for both the favourites as well as those seeking stage victory. Is it best to wait for the final three kilometres and then give it your all to gain a few seconds? Or should an attack be launched further out on the Monte de saint nizier de moucherot setting off a reaction in which everything could be lost? So we have made it out of the peloton in a group with Rui Costa. Already up the road are Tim Wellens and Pierre Rolland. Tim Wellens, of course, in the mountains jersey. So we're going to have to be stealing some points off him today in order to get a greater hold of this mountain jersey. Around one and a half kilometers to go until we reach the top of this first categorized climb. And Wellens is going to be leading out. Which is good for me because uh, I need to take someone's wheel and it will most likely be Wellens. Or I'll probably go for it myself actually. I'll see if I can pace off some of the other competitors. Roland is on my wheel. Wellens pulls off now. And I'll go up the tempo. See if Wellens actually catches up to my wheel. Koshta is now on my wheel and I'm going to attack now. Wellens attacks behind me. It might be a bad time to attack with Wellens behind me. But Koshta's going to come all the way around the outside it looks like. And may have cheekily blocked Wellens off and it was on the bike throw that Rui Costa won it. That's kind of annoying for me, but I don't think I had the outright pace in the end to take maximum points there. But we still get one point with Wellens getting zero. Two kilometres to go before we reach the top of this first category one of the day and the sprints, they went well for me. Uh, I won the original sprint from the breakaway with Kalma Jan, uh, although Zacharin did seem to come from absolutely nowhere and almost take the points off me, but I won it on the bike throw. And with Bonifacio, I swept up the rest of the points, managing to squeeze in between Trentin and some Azure Desert rider. Gaviria almost again beat me on the line, but it was down to the bike throw again, and Bonifacio won it. But we're about to go under one kilometre to go now, and it's again Wellens leading out. I'm going to pull off and see if he can take my wheel, and he's lost the wheel slightly, which means he's going to have to attack back up to it. This is good for me, and he's lost the wheel completely now, and Zacharin's going to go for it. I'm going to try and cover him off, but that's... Quite a bad idea because he's been attacking behind me. Again, Wellens is coming through on the left-hand side. Zacharin's going to come on the right-hand side. Who's going to take it out of the two? It's going to be Wellens, I think. And I'm going to take third, am I? No, I'm not. I've been beaten out by Dan Martin and Uran. That's very bad for the mountain jersey. 
two kilometers to go until the summit of the final category one climb in the last climb i just let everybody else go and take it because i seem like i've got enough energy for the stage win so i just let everyone else take the climb i can't remember who took it in the end but i think it was bookman i want to say i don't know where wellens finished on that climb you'll probably see it now yeah i'm still concentrating on this category one right now and I'm going to come to the front past Bookman. It seems as though Wellens isn't anywhere to be seen right now. So I'm going to try and ride some off my wheel. Uran and Bardet are with me. Bardet just coming past Uran there. And Uran's going to light up his sprint. So I'm going to go for it as well. Hopefully I can hold him off for this category 1. Because it's quite a big climb and there's quite a lot of points on offer. I'm going to hold Uran off in the end. And a little bit of lag there. I, very, I was very, very scared there. But Aran comes across second, Bardet third, Roland fourth, Dan Martin fifth, and Lander sixth. I'll see you at the final climb. With four kilometers to go, it looks like the breakaway will go all the way over to Postcom Taylorson to take you through to the finish. Just three kilometers to go then of stage 16 of this Tour de France and Bookman is trying to go solo up the final climb. There's a chase group of Lander and an unbelievable ride from Pierre Roland behind him. And there's an attack, attack from the group behind him. It's Lilian Kalmajan who knows that he has to do something or he's letting the stage fall through his grasp to Bookman. Only Bardet and Aran can follow it looks like as Lander and Roland have dropped back. The trio may have enough in them to bridge to Bookman. Despite one man being almost 30 seconds up the road, this stage still hangs in the balance. It's Bookman on his own against these three riders in behind, and he's still grinding on the pedals for the stage win. He's going to come under the flam rouge now. Is it too late from Kalmajan, Uran and Bardet? It looks as if so. Bookman's paced himself really well at this final climb. It looks like he's going to take victory as he gets out the saddle once more. They are coming up to the back of him, but it's not going to be enough. It looks like as Bookman enters the barriered section, he will come across the line. It seems they are too far back and Bookman will win stage 16. Coming in behind in second, it's going to be Rigoberto Oran. Third place goes to Roman Bardet of Agi d'Azer La Mondiale. And Lillian Kalmajan with an extremely good ride to finish fourth. Lander comes home fifth and will be kicking himself that he let Bookman go. The group behind the Lander group contains Sam Ehrman, Pierre Latour and Rui Costa Latour not being able to do enough to help Bardet get over the line and win the stage. And there is Molimer, a dejected man, could never really reach the breakaway all day, but it's all going on in the background of him with the favourites group, Fulsang, looking to retain his yellow jersey and not lose any seconds on anybody today. Coming into the barrier section now, and I think that's Rodlich that's gone on an attack off the front. Rodlich is looking to make up time today. He overtakes Latour, and he's coming towards the line. Will there be extra seconds as Bernal closes the gap? Was there a small gap there? Rodlich and Bernal crossing ahead of Fugelsang. So here is your stage winner. It may not have been the best tour overall for Emmanuel Bookman, but he's going to walk away today with a stage win after attacking away from the chase group and probably being the strongest in the breakaway all day. He managed to clear off a big group of Lander, Oran and Bardet. Fugelsang will retain the yellow jersey for today. But the real question is, were there time gaps involving the Roglic and Bernal group that came over ahead, maybe, of the peloton? We weren't really sure. On the line, we couldn't really tell. And now the new green jersey. It is Lilian Kalmajan. This is probably completely accidental from the Total Direct Energy team. But because of how many breakaways he's been in and how many green jersey sprint points that he took in the breakaway means that he is in the green jersey. A jersey that Kalmajan is not in is the KOM Mountains jersey. Wellens is in polka dots again and retains his lead. 
However, Kalmajan did gain very, very slightly on him today. But Wellens retains the polka dot jersey. And finally, the white jersey goes to Egan Bernal. It's not really a competition anymore. Should I even keep including this in the videos? I'll do it for the culture. Egan Bernal is the white jersey for Ineos. I don't remember who was second. To be honest, I don't care. Well done, lads. You rode a very good stage today. Finishing in the top five, even though the stage didn't suit us, is extremely satisfying. We take the green jersey. It's a good day. So here were the gaps for today's stage. Then Emmanuel Buchmann wins for Bora Hansgrohe. 25 seconds clear of Rigoberto Oran and 31 seconds clear of Roman Bardet. So a big gap in the end. Lillian Kalmashan came across the line fourth today. What a great ride from him. And he was only 50 seconds down on Buchmann. 30 seconds further down the road was Mikel Lander in a group with Ilna, Zakarin, Koshta, Martin, Roland, and Berut, Wellens, and Latour all seem to come across later on. Now is the big question. Were there time gaps between Bernal Roglic and Fudel Sang? Fudel Sang comes across the line at 4 minutes and 9, and Roglic and Bernal come across the line at 3 minutes 52, so it is a slight gain from Roglic and Bernal on Fudel Sang today. It was Lopez that tried to close the gap. Yates also gaining three seconds on Fudel Sang, but I don't really know how that puts him any further up the general classification. We'll find out. After today, then, the gaps are still large, but they can easily be closed. It's Fudel Sang, one minute and 44 seconds ahead of Bernal in second. Roglic in third is at two minutes and three, and Pino is best of the rest at six minutes down. Interestingly, Lillian Kalmajan still staying within 20 minutes of the leader. Him finishing in the breakaway today means he comes back in the 20 minute mark at 19 minutes and 58 seconds in 23rd place. This is the competition we are more worried about though. It is the climber classification and we gained slightly on Tim Wellens today, but it wasn't enough to take the jersey. Wellens, of course, being on 85 points. We are now up to 79, and Pogacar on 50, with Woods in fourth on 47, tied with Balka Molema. Right, this wasn't supposed to happen. The green jersey is now being worn by Lillian Kalmajan by a single point ahead of Oli Narsen in second. Tim Wellens is third, at 140 points, only 8 points behind us. Groenewegen is the best sprinter in the group in 4th at 137 points. And Nicky Terpstra actually makes it 2 in the top 5 for Direct Energy at 129 points in 5th place. Our actual sprinter, Bonifacio, is not doing too great. He's 12th on 94 points. As usual, Bernal is dominating the white jersey ahead of Ivanapol and Pogacar. And finally, Total Direct Energy move one place ahead of Bahrain McLaren at over an hour down on first place to Ineos. We are up to ninth in the team classification. Recovery again is good for the next stage. Kalmajan, of course, getting that plus two recovery bonus for being in the breakaway today. And the stage tomorrow is quite a big one. It's the biggest mountain stage of this tour. It's Grenoble to Meribel Col de la Loz. It's going to be a tasty one. It's going to be a GC shuffler, I think. It'll be interesting to see how many seconds Fudel Sang loses on the likes of Roglic and Bernal. But that's going to be it today. I will see you probably in two weeks again for the next episode. We're getting close to the end of this tour now. Once more, subscribe if you're new to the channel and like this content. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Stay safe. Enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.